And uh, welcome back to The Breakfast this morning. We always uh, will kick off with major stories making headlines uh, across the country this morning. And we're joined by Mr. Demola Kingbala, who's joining us uh, via Zoom. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me again. Always. Uh, and of course, uh, Mr. Bulahon Lojede, who's also here in studio with us. Good morning to you, Good sir. morning. Nice to be here. All right. We're going to kick off with stories from the uh, Punch newspapers this morning. There's already something about the bandits once again on your screen. And it uh, says there, Nigerian Governors Forum considers talks with bandits and others. It says that we may have to engage in dialogue besides security agencies' efforts, says uh, Fayemi. Kagara abductor with rocket-propelled grenade and uh, missile only federal government can license. And that's from uh, reps. There's also on the punch this morning, diesel price soars to 250 naira per liter. Businesses grown. And also, 2.6 billion naira, a billion dollars pipeline project. Reps grill and NPC. Contractors summon BPP. Police misconduct responsible for NSAR's protest, says XIG. And also restructuring can be, or can't be realized through political process. And that is from Akimumi edition of the AFDB president. Also on the pond this morning, 13 killed as rockets hit Meiduguri, uh, Nigerian Air Force Defends City. Apparently, or rather it seems, uh, the bandits, insurgents, I'm not sure what to call them now, have uh, new tactics for uh, their activities. Ondo declares holiday as Akiri Dolu's inauguration holds today. Also, Ogun threatens clamp down on forest reserves' illegal occupants. Rise in cyber terrorism and online fraud. Hate speech is disturbing, says President Mohamed Buhari. And also, uh, children detained septuagenarian father for 12 months over Lagos property. Makinde fire says uh, face off deepens. Parallel PDP caucuses meet. These are the big ones on the punch this morning. I'm starting with um, Mr. Kingbola this morning. I'm sure there's so much of them that you would like to speak on. Once again, um, I will start with the final admission by the Nigerian Governors Forum that they need to embrace dialogue. And I think if there's anybody out there who is still doubting the fact that Nigeria has lost the war against terrorism, I think this is the final um, admission. This is the, you don't need anything again to doubt because the Nigerian Governors Forum, made up of governors of all the states, they have now realized that, look, what Gumi is doing. Despite all the criticism, is what they need to do, which is not right in any sense. Okay, I'm not in a country that continues to negotiate with bandits, and it's an indictment of a terrible security situation. It's an indictment of the incompetence of service chiefs and the entire security machinery of the country. However, if that is the only way that we can achieve results to stop the kidnapping, to stop the killing, maybe that's where to go. But it is it's such a shame that we are the ones even seeking to, to, to engage bandits in dialogue. They are not even the ones begging that please come and talk to us. We are the ones begging them, let us talk. And my question is, for how long are we going to do this? Because once you do one, you are definitely going to do another one. We must stop. It's really so unfortunate. I, I, I never thought that a time will cover the issue of this country that we will be the ones trying to embrace bandits. Because call it by whatever name, banditry is a criminal activity, okay, that carries appropriate punishment, okay. So the precedent that Jonathan set with Niger Delta and Britons, I guess that is what we are writing on now. That after we've done it before, we can do it again. But that doesn't make it right in any way. There's a lot of angles to this. Right. Um, uh, first of all, you know, the part where we also all, you know, need to agree that they can be called bandits. Um, and not a terrorist group, not Boko Haram. Um, if the, the naming of them as bandits really has even affected uh, the war against, you know, the, these um, elements in our society, uh, I'm not sure. There's, I want you to also quickly react to the 13 people killed yeah. uh, with a rocket fire in Meduguri. Yeah, I mean, quickly now, the nomenclature doesn't matter. Whether you call them bandits, whether you call them terrorists, the fact remains that through their activities, they are killing people, they are robbing people, they are criminals. Let's not forget about what, they, what, what we call them. 
the northern governors have tried to moderate the intensity or, or the effect of this crime by saying they are bandit, they are not criminals. That's sophistry at the highest level. Be that as it may, what happened in Katunam, I mean, in Maribu yesterday, was in continuation of a terrorist attack on the city. 13 people killed, that's what we told. But what we gathered was that many more people were killed. And there are two different accounts. The General Army issued a statement that its troops have recaptured Mati, a very important part of the city. But that that contradicts the reality on the ground. Okay, so it it, it goes to show that Maduguri still remains a hot spot of criminal activity in the north. And if you want to speak to negotiate, who do you negotiate with? Are you going to go to the forest now, just like Sheikh Gumi did? So it it it. I remember we said there two weeks ago when the new service chiefs assumed duty, that success is not going to come in a matter of days or months or even years. And that's just what's playing out now. Right. Again, it's unfortunate, but we've got to deal with it. Okay, um, Saloji, you can also quickly uh, share your thoughts. Oh, well, um, I, for me, it reminds me of a comment, I think, in the last few days, where someone recommended, I think it was the Minister of Defence, that we should all be able to defend ourselves um, in certain circumstances. Now, the people we are going to be defending ourselves against are getting more and more sophisticated. The guys who kidnapped those kids uh, who are carrying missiles and you know RPGs and very sophisticated military-grade equipment. Uh, we also see that with the insurgents now, the people that got killed were by some high-level military-grade bomb or, or whatever that is. So um, we see the helplessness of the people. Can they truly defend themselves? I don't think so. Um, like uh, uh, Akin Bola said, we are fast losing it. The earlier we can get together, maybe like what the Nigerian Governors Forum are trying to, to, to do. now. Because if you even look at the governors, the way they've been speaking, Bauchi will go this way, Kitu will go that way, the senator, the, the senate president will go in another direction. Lalong went in another one. Yesterday is, is, a, is, is a tower of Babel, as far as I'm concerned. So if, if they can come together, maybe we can even arrive at something that makes sense, other than this uh, cacophony that uh, we've, we've had. All right. Okay, let's turn to the nation newspaper now. It says, Labor rejects plan to allow negotiation of wage by states. House bill to remove workers from ex exclusive list passes second reading. Service chief says we will secure Nigeria. Olunishaki Buratai cleared. Decision on cryptocurrency in our interest, says CBN Governor Emefili. Zenit Bank PLC profits before tax rises to 255.9 billion naira. House probes $2.6 billion, AKK gas contracts for content violation. This one says, Buhari converses new cybersecurity strategy. Troops, Boko Haram in Unimage gone dual. Mate recovered. And these two on the top of the nation newspaper says, Nigeria's federalism twisted, says Akiri Dulu, and governors target 1 million jobs with DSO. Mr. Alojidi, let's uh, begin with this one about labor, rejecting plans to allow negotiation of wage by states. Um, there, there are complexities to this, and, I, and, and we can decompose it. Number one is the fact that the capacity to pay by each of the states is different. The cost of living in each state is different. If you live in Lagos, Abuja, Portacourt, and some city, your cost of living is totally, totally different from a Gombe or, or, or some other parts of Nigeria. So we need to put that question out there. Should they be earning the same wage? Should minimum wage in those places be the same? My answer would be no. There's no basis for the same minimum wage in those places. Now, the other part is the fact that if you leave it solely to the state, would they do the right thing? So it looks to me like we need to achieve a mix of two things. Number one, at the central level, let's set the minimum. 
a citizen democracy, they know that each state can go ahead and pay what they are capable of paying. When I lived in the US, uh, $5 was the minimum wage in, in Texas. And that's what I got paid for working in the bookstore. But I was aware that I had friends who were working in California and were getting $9, which was the minimum, I think, in California. Is the capacity to pay the environment, the cost of living in those places has a very strong role to play. So I, I, we, we have to balance it somehow. Mm. All right, uh, Mr. Ajimola, let's uh, bring you, you in here. What are your thoughts on this one? I totally align with Labour's um, proposition. From experience, the states do not have the wherewithal to pay. They will, negotiate, they will agree with federal government, they will agree on which way to go. When it comes to implementation, they start telling you they cannot pay. So just like Mr. Oloja just said, let each state be according to its capability, according to its resources. Okay, and like like you actually said, here yeah, you have a centrally fixed minimum, and states cannot dance around that minimum depending on what they think they can pay affordability. Okay, you don't. I mean, where do you expect or should state government to pay its workers what legal state government is paying? So. That disparity needs to be taken into consideration. Okay. I very much support Labour's view. And that bill, okay, to remove um, wages and stuff from exclusive list is one of the best things that I think the House of Reps has done. It should right. be on the concurrent list, whereby both federal government and state government will have a say. Okay, the federal government cannot negotiate with Labour and impose whatever is negotiated um, on the state. But it has not worked and it should never work. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about this one. Service chief saying they will secure Nigeria. Remember that the Senate had, you know, confirmed them <clears throat> at the screening. Uh, Oluni Shaki Buratai all cleared for, you know, to resume as non-career ambassadors. What are your thoughts on this? Saying they will secure Nigeria. Is it the ambassadors that will the, secure Nigeria the now? Repeated. Or the new ones? <laughs> Should be the new ones, the I guess. <laughs> we will secure Nigeria. That's what the service chiefs are saying. Okay, I guess it's the new service chiefs then. Um, of course, what are we supposed to hear from them? Messages of hope that it can be done. And in reality, if we plug in all the right uh, uh, metrics or whatever, it is not undoable. It is unbelievable that a country of 200 million people with the kind of resources we have, with the history behind us, are fighting some ragtag uh, insurgency and we are unable to make a headway. It is, in my opinion, a whole lot of uh, betrayals and involvement are going on there. The lack of will to do certain things are going on there. Poor financing of the war in itself is, is, is in the mix. That is why we're not getting any international help. Nobody is going to put his troops on, on, on the line for Nigeria. It won't, it won't happen because they don't see us as serious-minded enough to want to win the war. When we get to that point where we're serious-minded, we can do better than so, what we're do, doing. But do you agree with Ms. Akimbola, who um, he mentioned earlier that you know we may be at a place where negotiation is our only um, option currently? And, you know, I, we I will put it in a different way. Negotiation is in the mix. If you're negotiating, if you're in a weak position, you're not going to get the right bargain. So you must be able to do what those governors will say, both kinetic and non-kinetic approaches. So you must show that you are capable. And that is in the military front. You say, look, I can deal with you guys. You know, but then I understand the complexity of what you guys are doing. So can we do talk? So you have a good bargaining part. So if we're yeah. talking about negotiation now, yeah. Would it end the way we saw in Zamfara State, where the Zamfara State governor received bandits in, at the government house who claimed to have repented, they swore with the Holy Quran they would never be bandits again, they gave weapons to the Zamfara government, and of course, monies will be given to these people. Is that where we're headed? How, when how it comes do you begin to, to trust bandits? They are bandits. These are criminals. If you listen to Gumi very well yesterday, he went to tell us that, look, these people are not even religious people. They don't know any Islam. They are not interested in any of those rubbish. That we, he was suggesting that we even need to train them Islam. Maybe that will help. So these people you're saying, they saw. What are they soaring with when they don't even believe in those things you're talking about? Hmm. It's a waste of time. So it seems so, that negotiation here might end in a win-lose situation. Negotiation at the end of the day will be money things 
and they get the money. How do you trust that somebody who is a bandit, after receiving money from you, if you find himself in a tight corner again, he will not come back to you? Even if the one you negotiated with says, oh, no, I, I can't go back to those guys. I won't do crime again. There could be a fraction, a, a faction mm -hmm. that will break out and say, look, if you don't want to do it, we are going to do it. So that is why we can negotiation alone will not solve this problem, but it has to be in the mix. All right, let's well. quickly uh, touch on one more story here on The Nation before we move on to The Guardian newspaper. Akira Delu here say Nigeria's federalism is twisted. And we saw just on the punch uh, talking about restructuring AFDB president saying it can be realized through a political process. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Let's, let's start with you, Mr. Alojide. Um Restructuring, I, I'm, a, I'm very passionate about restructuring matters. It is the only way to move this nation as a single body together, to move it forward. You see, we have a situation in Nigeria in which four states, four oil producing states, Bayelsa Rivers, Aquaibom, and uh, what's what, Delta, that's where 90 something percent of the oil comes from. Then you have taxes driven majorly by Lagos. And those same oil places, because yes. they, they produce a lot of taxes as well, and Anugun State. And these are the states feeding Nigeria. The average state in Nigeria, outside of those I listed, receive between 70 to 80, some 90% of the money they spend from Abuja. What kind of a state, a country is that? Hmm. It, we're not going to move forward. We're not going to get anywhere with that until states stop being distributors of wealth that they did not work for. And the governors are challenged to create wealth. That is when we'll be able to move this nation forward right. in several fronts. Let's uh, quickly go to The Guardian this morning. And I'm going to bring in Mr. Demla Kimbola um, here with The Guardian. The big one there says, uh, federal government passes new 10 trillion naira debt to unborn Nigerians. <laughs> All right. Interesting. AFDB president backs restructuring canvases United States of Nigeria. Court declares suspension of Oando's AGM unconstitutional. Gunmen kill three, kidnap nine women in Katsina. And police rescue 81-year-old monarch from kidnappers in Calabar. Uh, we can also find on The Guardian, the last one, Senate defies uh, protest, confirms ex-service chiefs as envoys. And um, that's where I would stop because of time. Um, Mr. Kimbola, I'm sure you can quickly um, start with the uh, debt yeah. we're in. Okay, yeah, of course. Um, the 10 trillion figure, I want to believe, is still what we call and still counting because this government hasn't ended its uh, tenure. So 10 trillion, I don't know how the Guardian arrived at that figure. But yes, we've always said that a debt in itself is not a problem. It is the purpose for which debt was incurred that worry you. Okay, if this debt was caught in the process of building critical infrastructure and investment in productive activities that will yield, there's no problem. But the analysis of the debt is what, what is the component, what is the breakdown. Okay, if we are borrowing money to pay staff salaries and do other frivolous stuff, then it's a big problem. All right. Then secondly, the issue of the service chips, it, it, it just shows that sometimes, and that's what people call Nigeria a joke. Okay, these guys didn't perform internally, as far as we're all concerned, and the best way to reward them is to make them non-career ambassadors. Look, forget about the fact that non-career ambassador position is like an honorary ambassador. The fact that we even consider them for such goes to show that we saw nothing wrong in what they do. The same Senate that condemned them, that called for, for it to, 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 to sack them, is the same Senate that yesterday approved their nominations. It, 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 it's shocking. It's sad. It's so unfortunate. And that's because in, in, in an administration, the tenure of those service chiefs should be reviewed. We should have started probing them, just like we did to Amosu and the rest of them. We should, we should be probing them now. So it is not a thing that you, you ask them to step down, then the next thing you are rewarding them with their position. It's just that something that we don't know or something we probably suspected. Okay. All right. And do you also believe in the United States of Nigeria? Restructuring is what everybody is clamoring for. But I also agree that it's not going to come on a platter of gold. It won't come through the political process. Those guys in the House of Reps and Senate, they will not sit down and approve restructuring because that's going to take the meal off them. It's going to take breakfast off their table. No politician in Nigeria today would come, I mean, at least those who are in Abuja, 
none of them will spoil structuring. So the structuring has to, if it's going to happen, then maybe it's going to be another war of independence, so to speak. Yeah. It's going to happen at all. All right, and of course our prayers uh, I support to, it. to uh, those uh, three, um, well, nine women kidnapped in uh, Katsina and three others uh, that were yeah. killed. Um, um, of course, it's, it's a never-ending um, you know, news Shit. story and, and it, you know, it just continues that way. Um, I, I, I don't know, I, I think I want to wrap up with you. Um, your thoughts, um, Mr. Kimbola earlier said that you know, we've gotten to a place where it almost feels like we need to accept that we've lost the war. Um, do you agree that we've lost it? We are, I, I will say we are losing the war. And if we're not careful, um, the entity as we have it today called Nigeria may not exist um, further down the lane. We are lucky. Uh, way back 2015, the CIA had predicted that we would not survive as a country beyond 2015. Uh, it's been six years uh, after that time, and we're still here. But we are squandering the goodwill. We are squandering the grace, so to see, that we have been given. And if care is not taken, it might be taken away from us. All right. Demola Kimbola and uh, Mr. Bulaho Olojide, thank you both for speaking with us this morning. My Always pleasure. interesting hearing your perspective. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Have a good time. All right. Have a good day. You too. Uh, okay, so us. we will now turn to today in history. Big stories out of South America and, of course, in the U.S. After the break on today in history.